So I'm in worship, what it means to me. And when we sat down as an AOA committee, we thought that this initiative was super. And really and truly, we wanted persons to share their ideas so that we can get a sense of what family worship means to them. And perhaps this can enhance your family worship. So we, as an AOI committee, are asking you as a church and as a community to join us for our family Sabbath, where we come together as a family in honoring and glorifying God. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Great God and our Heavenly Father, which art in heaven. We do give thee thanks and praise. We thank you, dear Lord, for all your goodness and your great love towards us. We thank thee for all what you have done for us and still working on us, that we could be what you want us to be. Please cleanse us from every unrighteousness and every ungodliness. Dear Lord, I present this sickness that is in Barbados and their families, O oh Lord, pass by and touch your people. Touch us and heal us and help us to look unto you. Because you are the orphan fish of our faith. You are a good healer. You are a physician, Father. Bless us, keep us, guide us, protect us. Cleanse us from every unrighteousness and every ungodliness. Help us that we may always keep our eyes fixed on thee. Because you are the master of masters. And you can do everything. They don't have a thing you cannot do for the human race. Father, we do ask, I do ask that you will pass your healing hands upon the country. And heal us. Be with the Prime Minister that is trying her best, oh Lord. Father, help her that she may give us freedom that we could worship you in spirit and in truth. Give us peace. Give us love. Give us understanding. Most of all, to love you with all our hearts because there is nothing you cannot do for your children that love you. Keep us walking in faith. Keep us looking unto Jesus. Keep us, dear Jesus, pardon and cleanse each and every one, those who are hearing of my voice, dear Father, that they will be be ready to meet you because you said the time is at hand and we could see the signs, all the signs is upon us, oh Lord. Help us to be ready and hide in Jesus. And when you come, we all, we all will glorify you and praise you when we get to that kingdom you have prepared for us. Keep us true and faithful. Multiply our faith, our hope, our charity. Most of all, to love Jesus again and again and again. And when you come, we all will be saved in that kingdom you have prepared for us. Give us peace, give us understanding, give us everything that we need that we could walk the walk and talk the talk. Bless every pastors, everyone that Everyone that publishing the word in season and other season, preaching the word that men and women may hear and understand and that they come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, oh Father, because the time is at hand. The time Jesus is about to step down and many of us are not ready. Father, help us to be ready. Pardon us and cleanse us. And when you come, that all of us will be ready and that we'll go home and sing eternity soon. Spend eternity with you. Oh, Father, be with us all. Be with us all, especially those who are proclaiming the gospel. Lord, we need a cleansing. We need a cleansing at this time. Lord, pass by and touch us and heal us and make us what you want us to be. These are the mercies I ask in Jesus' most holy name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good night, um, everyone. I just want to thank everyone for tuning in and joining us today. 
Um, here to talk with us, we have. I'm Robert Maycock. Yes, we have brother Robert Maycock, and he will be here to just give us a little view as to what is family worship and why it matters. So, brother Maycock, let's get right into it. What does family worship mean to you? Well, um, I, it's a very important part of my day, um, each, each day, but especially on Friday evening, uh, as we welcome the Sabbath, family worship is really wonderful. I look forward to it. All right. How do you and your family prepare for the Sabbath? I know others have said that they prepare sometimes during the week, they, pre they prepare as one Sabbath done, but how you and your family prepare for the Sabbath? Well, the, in terms of preparing for the Sabbath, um, our lives have gone through several changes. As you, you know, we've grown, we were, had, were young parents, and then we became older parents mm -hmm. and, um, with, you know, children growing up and stuff. And then they fled the nest and now we are left on our own. So that family worship and preparation, sorry, preparations for the Sabbath have changed with the changes in our life. Um, as young parents, it was, you know, all hands to the plow. Um, uh, Sister Jackie um, is a school teacher and never got off until three o'clock. While um, our children and myself, we got off at one. Uh, they got off at 12 and I uh, got off at one on, on Fridays. So things that we didn't do on Thursday evening, we would rush, rush home to do on um, Sabbath on, on Friday afternoon, um, you know, to get ourselves ready for when um, and the sub forest came in, so we'd be doing start the um, cook, cooking and um, cleaning the house, uh, do the final cleanings and stuff like that. Um, that that was what we did when we were younger. Now, as we are older, we have um, um, and are on our own, as it were. Um, our preparation for Sabbath would start on Thursday. And typically, would um, shopping and stuff would then be done on Wednesdays and and Thursdays. And then we'd start preparing the house on, on Thursday evening um, in the Thursday night so that by um, Sabbath during the daytime, most of the tidying is done and cooking is done. Okay, sounds sounds like you guys adjust to that pretty pretty fine. Um, do, you, do you guys invite your um, children? I know they, you said they have left the nest. But do you guys invite your children back into the household uh, for, for family worship? Sometimes. Did that ever happen? Yes, yeah, sometimes they, they would come by. Um, the, um, and sometimes it's more like having them participate with us by phone, by, uh, virtually. Um, okay. um, this would, would happen. Sometimes they would come. On Sabbath evening, closing the Sabbath, we have, we would have some of them at times. On Sabbath evenings, now we have um, Sabbath worship with another family by telephone, um, and and we really look forward to that. It's not just the two of us; we we visit with another family to have Sabbath worship. Oh, that's now, beautiful. That's yeah, that's beautiful. Extending your family to another family so they too can participate and be a part of your Sabbath worship. Beautiful. Moving on, can you tell us why is it, why is it important for families to study one and for families to have worship? Why is it important for families to study and families to have worship? Well, one thing about humans is that they forget quite often <laughs> so that you know they do they simply do as you would know from uh, deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 to 9 um god was saying listen this is my law and you need to stick it up all over the house on the doorpost repeat it constantly write it down um as you taught it and passed it on to your children 
Um, because as human beings, we um, uh, forget quite um, easily. Also, we have um, what is in theological terms called the carnal nature. We have a mm -hmm. tendency that pulls us away from that which is good. So we always need to be beholding that which is of God so that we counteract our natural tendencies to evil. It sort of tempers or, you know, uh, or improves our management of our bad side. Um, wow. and, and that's why I think that we should, we should worship uh, studying the Bible. First of all, the Bible, studying the Bible teaches you about God. There are several things. There are, there are several um, genres of, of, of writing in the Bible. There's poetry. For example, when you read the Psalms, um, there's a, I mean, the Psalmists, the, the whole number of them, they have such a wonderful way of communicating. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, and then, for example, when you read Job, Job is torturous um, at times, but it's also very useful in helping us to look at and help to explain why there is a good God and that in spite of a good, a very good God, there's so much um, harm and danger and evil in the world, so much pain and suffering, which is a problem that everyone is confronted with. How do you explain suffering? How do you explain the horrible tragedy of um, COVID? And, and, yeah. and, and it's, you know, how do you explain it? And, and um, yes, um, Job is terribly profound, but um, it is still accessible. As you read it, you are able to understand more and more of um, the life and world in which you live. Of course, reading the, in the New Testament, um, everyone has their favorite bits, but the Gospels, the four Gospels are precious um, because they relate um, to stories on how Jesus lived and his, te his direct teachings in terms of parables and so on, and how he handled various situations. So, and there are, it's, it's wonderful because you are able to view God up, and up close and personal. And I, I think it's great value in studying the word of God because it gives you a view of God which could be distorted if all you did was look at the suffering and sadness around us. Well, well said. And I like the fact that how these Bible characters can also pick a pick paint a picture as to what is happening right now in our lives and as you said that we can still see that god is good that god brought through these people that were going through this stuff he brought yeah. them out in the end and god it gives us a glimpse it gives us hope that god will do the same he has done it in the past and these things he's studying his word and seeing how he he came through for these people and i know he will come through for us also families that have um young ones, children. Um, I believe that family worship, studying together, it helps It helps train the children for yes. a sense of corporate worship to really understand who God really is and to help them get, you know, like a glimpse and taste of really and truly what he is. And I think that's a beautiful thing for families and mothers and fathers who have young ones to actually encourage them to have family worship. And what family worship also does, um, it, it brings a sense of peace and a sense of togetherness within our homes. Like persons being so busy throughout the week, they may not interact, they may not able to you know, communicate on certain things, but Sabbath and that family worship together, that togetherness helps bring each other together since the week was so busy. And being able to, you know, talk, communicate, share how your week was, you know, reflect. And that, that too is what family worship does. It bonds and bring persons together. That, that, that is quite true. What I, um, you talked about um, having family worship on, on Sabbath. The, I'm, I'm calming you. That is so true. This thing works like a charm. <laughs> No, no, I'm serious. You know, by the time I had sing, but I thoroughly enjoy singing. Um, um, the most fun part to me in the worship is singing. I sing the hymns. Hymns are, uh, you know, I, I enjoy singing hymns. 
Um, so we sing hymns, and but a uh, peace settles over the home mm. when you had, and every person can go to sleep. I mean, with a sense of restfulness that is, it is, it is amazing. I mean, you just, it's an absolutely to see it before your eyes. You sing and worship God, and a peace settles on the place. And how stressful and difficult it has been and during the week or during the day, there's a peace that comes and everybody goes to rest. Well said, well said, very true. All right, moving on. Um, I know you said that you like singing. Is singing your favorite part um, in your family worship? Yes, is singing absolutely. your favorite part? It absolutely. is? Yes, I'm singing hymns. These are the hymns. Sometimes we sing gospel songs, but mm -hmm. usually we sing hymns, either out of the old hymnal or the new hymnal. And mm. singing, singing. I mean, there are many, many beautiful hymns in, the, in, in these books. Yeah, there, there definitely is in the old hymnal and the new hymnal. And like family worship opens you to like new hymns. Like probably if you have family worship with parents, grandparents, et cetera, the hymns that they may know, you may not know. And that gives you like a chance to learn new, new stuff. So that's the beauty in being together for family worship. Um, well, what is, in addition, in addition mm -hmm. um, there are some... Um, recordings of the the hymns on 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 um, on the internet, and okay. so we have gone through from hymn number one to like hymn six hundred and almost to the response to the responses a number of times. I'm saying from the first hymn to the last, and from mm. the last hymn to the first, and from the first <laughs> hymn to the last, and we have done this several times. And it's just fun going through it all the time. Yeah. What would you say is one thing your family looks forward to most on Sabbath and why? What is one thing your family looks forward to most on Sabbath and why? Well, growing up, I think they thoroughly enjoy going to church. Um, but as they grew older, now that they live in... Um, we, we live in different houses. Um, yeah. I think Sabbath meal is 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 very important to us. Yeah. We get together, you know, and and chat and fellowship and talk about the Bible. Maybe argue about it a little bit too. <laughs> All right, I see that. It's really and truly what your family. And I, I mean, like most families do like to sit down and eat, and that's where conversations, you know, start up and, and such. And persons that you haven't come in contact with throughout the week, that family meal, you know, helps you to converse with that, fam that family member. And yeah. lastly, lastly, um, can you take us through what usually happens during your family worship? And, and you already told me what was your favorite part of your family worship, and that was singing. So can you yeah. now take us through what usually happens during your family worship? I know, know you said earlier that your family worship dynamic has changed now because since you guys are older and your children left, you know, and you include others into your family worship, what, what is the whole idea of your family worship now that your children have left? And maybe you can share what it was before, you know, okay. um, just the structure of your family worship. Because sometimes persons like to do non-traditional stuff for family worship and traditional stuff. And you can share what you and your family can do. Okay. Well, um, currently, we would um, sing. We would, we would, well, our, the other family that we worship with, we would um, organize time to, as, as the sunset comes along, we would, you know, connect with one another. You know, are you ready to have worship? Stuff? We say, okay, call me back five minutes, that kind of thing. Um, and then um, we get together and we chat, have um, icebreakers, I think it's officially called. You know, chat, how was your week, you know, 
oh, you know, I heard from this person overseas and, you know, this is happening and, you know, to share family news. Um, and then we would spend some time selecting hymns. Someone, you know, leads out in, um, in selecting hymns. We would did this, okay. I was thinking that we could do um, a theme, you know, the peace of God this week, for example. And, um, and these are four or five hymns that we could sing. Um, what do you think of them? Um, and, you know, we'd select, okay, we do these, these. Oh, but did you think of that one over there? Um, so we would select our four or five uh, our hymns that we want to sing. And then we would pray and start to sing. Uh, we would sing through those hymns. And then we do devotionals after that. Um, we do devotionals as, um, you know, part of what we've read during the week. Um, uh, uh, to, you know, give us a key thought. Maybe that's about five minutes. And then we would do mission stories mm. of, um, you know, people's experience around the world, uh, what God is doing for them, you know, so we can pray for them as well and, and, uh, and so on. And then we have a time of prayer requests. So we um, talk about the families or areas or issues that we want to pray for. Um, and then we would in, engage in prayer as well. We would, um, so we have uh, persons in the family that we would pray for on a regular basis, or person in the church that we pray for. And then sometimes there are crises um, in the family. Somebody has COVID is in a hospital or something like that. Um, or sometimes there might be deaths. Um, somebody has died and the family need to be comforted and so on. So we pray for various things um, as, you know, as they come up. So it's not necessarily one same thing that we pray for. And of course, we pray for uh, our fellow members and, and so on, um, that, that, and, you know, our, our own families. And after that, we, after prayer, then we say our goodbyes and leave. That usually takes us about an hour. Cool. And that is... We're we are, we are enjoying ourselves. I'm sorry, we're not in any hurry. <laughs> oh, that, uh, that, children, that is but with, children, but, for, but with children... Our, our worship didn't last that long. Um, and um, that it'd probably be like 20 minutes, maybe 30. Um, and there would be more children's stories involved when they were younger. Okay. It, would, it would revolve around children's stories. Uh, even as young people, it would revolve around stories. Sometimes you read a book, um, a book of um, an inspirational book that you could follow from week to week. Some of the, you know, like reading course books in, in Pathfinders or something like that. So we yeah. need a bit make sure that we, you know, include that in our worship as well. Okay, nice. Sounds beautiful. Um, what I really like about it is the fact that you guys include um, others, um, not actually just including them in your, um, you know, inviting them, but also praying on behalf of others because we see how beautiful prayer prayer really is and how it works and being able to petition on other people's behalf and bring requests and stuff to God is so beautiful to see a family doing that and it really also opens up to children and teach them how you know how to pray and, and that really starts from the family because they have interacted with young people and they were like, they don't like to pray. They don't, they don't feel comfortable. And they feel as though in family worship, that's where it starts. Um, encouraging and giving the child the opportunity, even to say the opening prayer, the closing prayer, you know, and being able to give them a chance to talk to God. And that's really and truly um, beautiful to, to see that your family um, includes others through prayer in your family worship. Um, but that when is... we were younger, when, when the children were younger and at home, everybody prayed. Um, every single body prayed. Nobody was missed out. Um, and that know, is very short prayers. Pray short prayers and pray long prayers. But everybody prayed. And that is and that is very important for families and parents to you know in grill and instill those those small this those small values in their children and. As the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. And that is beautiful to see that you 
and your wife um, instill those values into your children. Okay, so that's all the time we have, um, Brother Mako. Thank you for sharing with us uh, what family worship is, what it looks like for your family, what you guys do for family worship. And uh, really and truly uh, keep having family worship because at the end of the day, family worship brings others together. As you said, it gives us a peace within our homes that we have never felt before. And most importantly, it glorifies and honors God. So thank you very much. And continue to have family worship with your family. Thank you very much and God bless. God bless.
And all my life you have been faithful mm -hmm. All my life you have been so, so the goodness of God. Yeah. And for all my life, all my life you have been faithful. And all my life, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. All right, it is recording. <laughs> Hi, good. Hi, good night, everyone. Um, today we have some guests that would be speaking to us about family worship, family Sabbath, what it means to them. So, guys, before we start, can you introduce yourself to the audience, please? All right, my name is Ginger. I am Riley. You can't see. I'm Shadira Dottin. Hi. And I'm Curtis. And Curtis. So we have Ginger, we have Riley, we have Shadira, and we have Curtis. Thank you for taking the time out to do this interview. So first question, guys. What does family Sabbath mean to you? What does spending time with your family having worship, what does that mean, mean to you? It meaning that you get to see each other and you get to fellowship with one another. Okay. Anyone else would like to chime in? Exactly that. After having a long week and interacting with lots of different types of people, I find that having a group of people that you can look forward to seeing um, on Friday afternoons is quite um, relaxing. So we look forward to Sabbath for that reason. And after seeing them, I also look forward to having that time alone with myself and my thoughts and with God, um, waiting for him to reveal to me things that I would have been thinking about during the week from his word. Amen. How about you, Curtis? Yeah, what well, does family Sabbath mean? Well, for me, is well, I actually look forward to getting together with uh, the treaties individuals. We get together and we could share our views on what we study in for each particular week. Ah, nice, nice, nice. That is very important in terms of studying, sharing views, help each other to grow. So moving on, how do you guys um, as a family uh, prepare for the Sabbath? I know everyone have a different way of preparation for the Sabbath. So I want to know how you guys prepare for the Sabbath. Okay. All right, since we are normally online, um, I will let y'all um, talk, but since we're normally online, um, we basically would designate to each person a particular Sabbath or a particular week in the month to do their own program. So you can wow. plan to do whatever you want to do. So that's where we'll let Curtis and Riley and Shadira now come in and say what they would do on their particular Sabbath. Okay. Uh, well, my sab Sabbath, you do, I usually have every third Sabbath uh, every month. Mm -hmm. And I usually do, like, we start off with a word of prayer. We will have um, the watch text, the Sabbath text, as you will call it, which is Revelation chapter 22, verse 13 to 15, and Revelation chapter 22 verse 20 verse 21 
Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. And Exodus chapter 20, verse 11, verse 8 to 11. And we will go into like a, a Bible discussion. Okay. Again and again. That's how it usually does be. Okay. How about you, Curtis? Okay. Um, so we, as Ginger said, we alternate. The first Sabbath of the month will be Ginger. The second Sabbath for me. Third is Shadira. Fourth is Riley. And if there is a fifth Sabbath, we just freestyle oh, on okay. that Sabbath. Um, <laughs> so basically, it is like a, a study, a study thing. So, um, what when when they go and treat the Bible during the week, if they find something when they find something interesting, I'll say, okay, well, next time is my turn and then go over this. And I find um in the past, they don't mean say it is to teach is the best way to learn. So in order, in order, in order to like teach what I what I wanted to study for that month, I have to go over and through it so that maybe we normally have a study and a question session. Okay. So that so that I could be able to explain it in the best way I can to the rest. Okay. So, All right. So, yeah. Right. Okay, Riley. So on my Sabbath, I would normally do the prayer, the hymn, hymns, and the Bible text. And then I would find a video. And after that video, we would discuss what we did. And then we would have a small quiz. Oh, on that video? Yes, please. So really, is the um, Kahoot boss. He's the one who finds all of the Kahoots. We used to play different games, like animal person, place, and thing with Bible characters and stuff. But we found that for the past couple of weeks, we've stuck to Kahoot because everybody seems to like it. And we've seen growth in everybody actually improving in their Bible knowledge and stuff like that. Um, Amen. Um, the actual thing um, came about because of um, the lockdown. Me and Riley used to worship alone. Um, I don't believe in forcing people to worship. So if he does not want to do it, I would encourage him to read on his own and stuff like that. But okay. when he really wants to do it, we will come together and they would read a story and do the same things that we would have done here. But I found since we came together as a group, you see more enthusiasm, to, to want to participate and to want to, um, how can I put it, to want to plan the programs and have the Kahoot ready for everybody to play and stuff like that. So that's what we do basically to prepare. When we are going to church, we would press our clothes and stuff like that on um, Friday nights, Friday evening, sorry, or Thursday mm -hmm. nights, right? Okay. Um, to make sure we are ready, have everything prepared and ah. worship and stuff like that on Friday nights. Yeah. Okay. That's lovely. That is good. Um, so in terms of um preparation for meals and stuff, you all usually plan your own meals um early up the journey week, um, so that it doesn't be a, a hassle at the end of, uh, of the week. All of that is all of that is preparation. And um, do you guys do that? Well, um, I'll talk for my family first, my okay. immediate family. Um, for us, I know what I'm cooking from the week before because I shop on um, Fridays. So okay. because I shop on Fridays, I would normally have everything there um, for the next week. So I would normally mm. do something special, like I would bake a cake or something like that for Sabbath. And our mm -hmm. meals are basically simple on Sabbath. Anything simple and a cake or some special treat um, for the Sabbath uh, meal. Okay. Curtis and Shadira. <laughs> Yeah, how like how you how you all plan for your all meals and such on a Sabbath? Do you all plan any week before? Do you all just come up with the idea of what to eat last minute? What you guys do? I mean, for me, I normally always cook during the week. Um, okay. for food. so normally I just make sure that I have food over the weekend. Um, so from early in the week. Okay. How about you, Shadira? <laughs> I gotta say it did the same day. Oh, okay. Okay, no problem. All right, moving on swiftly. Um, can you tell us why is it important for families to study together and to worship? 
Why is it important for families to study together and to have worship? The reason why family is important for worship and studying together is to help us to grow, not only physically, but also spiritually. And uh, because you, you're also like, in, they're also encouraging you and stuff like that. So, okay, that's all right. It. How about you, Curtis? Okay, well, it, when, when you're in a group, you're able to um to have some way, someone else analyze what, what you're saying or going through. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, the feedback is the best part of it, I, I find. Okay, nice, nice. Interesting. How about you, Riley? Um, I think it is important because you can bond with each other. Okay, like, yes. Okay, and that's because a good way of putting it. Because when you're in school during the week, you can't really talk to each other. Okay, that's a nice way of putting it. How about you, Ginger? Well, um, I think it's important, um, as Rayleigh would have said, as a bonding mechanism, um, also as a, a sounding board for your ideas through the week. Um, one thing that I find is very important is to re-emphasize the importance of Sabbath. Um, I find that each week we have a we have a group of texts that we call the Sabbath texts, and we say yeah. week after week so that we can remind ourselves the purpose for which we are doing it. We are doing it because God is the Creator. We are doing it because God sanctified and set apart the Sabbath for special use. We are doing it because He said in Exodus chapter twenty to remember the Sabbath day, and finally we do it because He says in His Word that blessed are they that keep His commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life and That's may right. enter into the gate into the city. So we do this because we believe that scripture has shown us that it's something that must be done. And as a family, we have purposed in our hearts that we will try our best to do what we ought to do so that we can have right to the tree of life and enter into the city that is made for us. Amen. Amen. That's a nice way of putting it. So um, coming on, we're soon finished. What is one thing you look forward as a family most on the Sabbath? What is one thing? your family look forward to most on the Sabbath and why? Why do you look forward for this thing? To sleep after the week. <laughs> really, you said to sleep? Yeah. <laughs> oh, day of rest and gladness. Oh, day of joy and light. <laughs> okay, I can't, fault, I can't fault you for that because sometimes I do look forward for sleep. What about you, Shadira? What about you, Shadira and Curtis? Um, actually, I used to look forward to the um, Sundays we would get together on a Sabbath um, after church or whatever, and mm -hmm. we have to get this stuff. But I've, I've actually during COVID, we haven't been able to do that in, in quite a while. So I'm really looking forward to actually get physically back together rather than the, the Zoom thing okay. <laughs> and actually get and stuff. Okay, all yeah. right. What about you, Shadira? Um, I enjoy everything about the Sabbath, relaxing, <laughs> studying, listening to um, listening to sermons and stuff like that, and also spending time with with Ginger and Curtis and Riley on okay. Sabbath. All right, nice, nice. What about you, Ginger? What you look forward most? Well, um, Sabbath brings back memories to me when my grandmother was alive. My great grandmother, sorry, was alive because she was the one who used to bring us together to, to worship all of the old songs from the hymnal. I like to sing those old songs. You don't hear them very regularly. So that kind of brings back those memories to me. Um, I also like spending time with my family, extended and immediate um, a lot. And then after that, I like to go to sleep. But unfortunately, sometimes we have um, Bible study I have other Bible studies. Each of us would have our own Bible study to go to, and sometimes that goes on to 11, 12 o'clock. Um, so sometimes I like to do that as well <laughs> on Sabbaths or just bask on the word of God because sometimes the Lord brings things to you during the week and it's only on Sabbath when the things become clear, I believe, because he has promised that he would make certain things clear to you, especially on the Sabbath. So 
Um, I like that about the Sabbath scripture becoming clear and you're able to understand it much better when you study it more on the Sabbath. So those are the things I enjoy. Okay, nice, nice, nice. And that's like, y'all really do enjoy the Sabbath. <laughs> um, last question, guys. Can you take us through what usually happens <laughs> during your family worship and maybe your favorite part in that family worship? Because other people have a different, you know, regime of their family worship. Others may not do the whole traditional stuff of scripture reading, etc. They may go out. So what do you guys do for family worship? And what is your favorite part? Each and every one of you, what is your favorite part in that family worship? All right, I would give the synopsis of the whole thing and then everybody can give their favorite part. Because I believe that what would have happened in this interview, we would have talked about <laughs> all the things that we would have done but just to bring it together yeah. so we start off with prayer somebody will pray probably the person that is in charge and then okay. we read four texts the first text is taken from genesis 1 1 the second one from genesis 2 1 to 3 the third one from exodus 28 to 11 and the fourth one revelation 22 13 to 15 and then verse 21 these are all reminders of why we keep the sabbath then we go into our song service. Each person will choose one or two songs, depending on how the spirit leads. And then we would go into our um, activity, our story, our video, our reading, our presentation, depending on who is the person that is in charge. After we finish that, there will be a question and answer session, and we'll get to do a Kahoot or some other game that Rayleigh and I guess Shadira or somebody would prepare for that, but Rayleigh is now in charge of the Kahoot, so we normally would do a Kahoot now. So mm -hmm. my favorite part of it is when we're singing and when we're doing the Bible study. Those are my two favorite parts of the worship. I'll let the others um, say their favorite parts. And why? And why, why, why? are those parts? Because I read, as I, was say, as I would have said before, the nostalgic feeling of how it used to be growing up uh, okay. with my grandmother and my mother and all of us and Charles Ian and everybody in the house worshiping together. I used to love, love, love Sabbath, right? And when it was by my dad, the same principle applied. So it's just something to make me feel as though something went right in my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. What about you, Shadira, Curtis and Riley? Shadira, what about you? Uh, I think I enjoy every part of it. Um, but to me, I enjoy most of all the singing and the word. And I think I enjoy to the um the kahoot. Kahoot is really nice. It kind of informs you and stuff like that. And yeah. Wait, wait. And what you do and what you enjoy and the kahoot and the same most? Because it, it brings you closer to God and the songs that we sing currently in the hymnal to me, they, has, they have meaning and, you know, it shows you about God's love and his forgiveness and stuff like that. Also, mm -hmm. it is better than the contemporary songs that that other churches would sing. Okay, okay. It seems that you love hymns. What about you, Curtis? Uh, my favorite part would be the Bible study. Well, the, the questioning after the Bible study and the Kahoot. Okay, and why? Uh, well, the question after the Bible study, um, you always learn something. And you're able to ask questions and, and figure well if you, if you had the wrong idea or what where you if it was going wrong, you're able to clarify and why. So the whole the whole discussion yeah. and the goals. Um basically I enjoy the goals, the, the whole scoring system and stuff. So in, in the beginning, i I'm probably um the probably last person in the group to join um the Christianity. Okay. So I we, we, we I see my, my score go up. So that, yeah, I actually learned it. Uh, that, 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 I should that really is, with the others, you know, it is score, it is score when it comes to Kahoot. So yeah, it's it, it going. It going. <laughs> yes. 
and, and, and you increasing your score each and every day, they're encouraging you to keep studying mm -hmm. and you will continue to see that growth and they're encouraging you. And at the end of the day, you can be at the top of your game just like them. Yeah, so it will pump you. I just know what kind of score it goes. <laughs> the whole fun of it. Riley, what about you? What do you enjoy most about your worship and why? My favorite part would be Kahoot, and that's because it actually gives me a challenge after I sit down and relax after school. Oh, okay. You like challenges. Okay. Um, I see how worship, family worship helps grow. It helps encourage. It helps gives us a tighter bond because at first you guys weren't, you guys were always close. Kind of, I guess so. But no, I like everybody and I am accepting of everybody. So once you come there to me and you are accepting the fact that I am not going to be on the phone with you every day and do those type of things, once you're okay with that, we generally would have a bond with one another. And I find the two of them, Shadira is very friendly as well. Um, very, very friendly. She remembers birthdays and stuff like that. Curtis is, is more shy, but he does lovely cheesecake, so he would be my friend. <laughs> and really don't have a choice. So I, I'm guessing <laughs> all the time we had a little um, thing going on, but the worship part that we were doing together, it was just me and Riley initially, but the worship part that we were doing together came about as a result of the COVID, um, the thing that we had to be in at home and, and online. Yeah. Um, Shadira came to um, call me one day and asked if she could join me and Riley, and that was it. She joined that week, and Curtis came after, and it was like nothing separating us between then. We had some times where we were so tired that we couldn't do it, but as yeah. of late, nobody's saying that they're so tired that they can't do it anymore. Everybody's showing up every week <laughs> for Amen. worship now um, with Amen. their program ready. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And I think it, 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 it caused you to grow closer, and I, and I guess yes. you guys closer than we all started so i want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me and to just share with others what family worship means um to you and you know normally persons see family worship as from like the biological aspect but having you guys here sharing your family worship ginger extending your family worship to others mm -hmm. so they too now can be a part of your family is beautiful and that's what mm -hmm. god wants us to do god wants us to have that beautifulness the beauty in our homes and even invite others into our homes so they too mm -hmm. can glorify and honor god so i want to thank you guys so much for sharing with us and do continue to have beautiful family worship so thank you and goodbye all right goodbye All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
give me a signal when it when you start. Oh. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. Today we are with a special guest here to talk to us about family worship. Can you introduce yourself, what church you go to, and what do you do there? I am Wayne Morgan. I go to the Amazing Grace of the Adventist Church and I am the first elder and co family life director. Okay, well then that's perfect because the first thing I'm going to ask you is what does family worship mean to you? To me, family worship is a time to connect, not only to build your relationship with God, but to connect with the other family members. It's a time to share what has been going on in your life. Prayer in particular is a special emphasis and also a time to share thoughts about what God has done for you or maybe some particular message that you have read about or some that you've listened to at that particular moment. And that's interesting because I think we often focus on the connection with God part and maybe forget that it's also bonding within the family. So that's a good point. And how do you and your family prepare for the Sabbath? Interestingly enough, preparing for the Sabbath begins as soon as one Sabbath is finished. Um, we, we begin by thinking about what outfit we're going to be wearing in the next Sabbath, depending on our participation or involvement in church. Most times it's planning or ensuring that the program or that ministry is ready for the next Sabbath. But we also like to think about possibly how we will spend the Sabbath also. Okay. And sometimes part of that is, is planning for it. So we like to make sure that everything is ready so that there is no rushing when it comes to Sabbath and we can actually relax and enjoy the time spending together. Yeah, and you touched on this a bit before, but can you tell us why it's so important for families to have worship together, especially on Sabbath? Especially on Sabbath, because Sabbath is the time that you actually do not need to rush the way that you would during the week. There is no time limit. So you are able to share in songs that mean something to you or that have a, have a particular connection because of the type of week you have had. Uh, for me, we also use the opportunity that there have been a conversation that you didn't finish. Or there may have been a moment where you may not have fully allowed God to lead you and you needed to say, I'm sorry. And it's good to get that out of the way before Sabbath begins to ensure that you can actually enjoy fellowship together. You are not uncomfortable when you go to church and you don't have to fake a smile, but you've actually dealt with any issues that were on the line. And you can rest on Sabbath night, Friday night. Mm -hmm. Total rest, feeling totally comfortable that your connection with your family and with God is intact. That's interesting. It reminds me of communion because we talk about at communion you're supposed to make things right with your fellow church members, but maybe we don't put that emphasis on when you make things right with your own family. So then that's a good point that especially on Sabbath, I mean generally family worship, but especially on Sabbath you have that time to fix anything that may happen or smooth out any issues. So yeah, that's really interesting. So when the Sabbath actually comes, how do you guys spend it? What are your favorite parts? All right, um, I should warn you that is not necessarily traditional. So there is not the sit down, choose a song, read a scripture, find something from Ellen G. Wright to read, okay. uh, pray about it. We we tend to we love we both love nature. And so many Sabbaths may find us watching the sunset, um, a moment in nature on a, on a hill somewhere, um, taking a drive to a park, a, a park in the country that we don't normally go to. Um, lots of our vacations were spent out of our village when it was possible. So maybe hiking up a hill, sitting on a ford, just and just, just relaxing and enjoying the fact that the Sabbath is about to begin and that fellowship, that uninterrupted fellowship with God was going to happen and looking forward to it. I, I think some of the parts 
that I look forward to. I think it's the songs. Mm -hmm. we, we both love music, but, um, well, I shouldn't say but. The reality is we sometimes know different tunes to the same songs. And I, I, I teach my wife Natalie that I'm not sure what religion she was before. <laughs> but um, the hymn that she sings, or um, the way that she sings it is not necessarily the way that I sing it. Or she sometimes tells me, we all have the words wrong in the hymn when those are the words I grew up singing. <laughs> but we, we are able to share. I learn from her. She learns from me. So we get to sing those songs. And then there are lots of songs that mean a lot to us because of our experiences. Mm -hmm. And so music for me maybe is, the, is one of the main things in our family worship that made that difference and, and helps to create the atmosphere okay. when it comes to spending time with God as a family. So was your, did your family worship when you first started? Was that traditional you become untraditional, non-traditional, or was it always something that you guys did tailor-made to your family? Um, ours is tailor-made. My family was just started from the time I was not, from the time I remembered <laughs> myself. My my father would wake us early on mornings and we would have family worship and then on evenings and Sabbaths especially coming on the south you'll have that family worship time. That time could be more structured. Um, at that time I, I spent many morning family worship standing so that I wouldn't sleep or we thought it was dropping to sleep. So I guess somewhere in my head, I, I didn't want the standard way to continue going. Then I, I was a young adult living on my own, having my own family worship, looking for different ways to make it still interesting because sometimes taking it less importantly or going to the Bible doesn't necessarily every day have the same pull. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to find different ways of spending time with God and still get a message from Him. Then as we, as we got married, um, our devotion time started on the forward walk. And that also was an opportunity to witness. And we met quite a few people there. They were still studying, they were asked questions. One young lady actually came back to church and got baptized and she's still at her church in St. George right now. So we, we kind of started building that family worship connection together. And I don't know a lot of people, but I, I, for me, that that connection makes the relationship even more interesting and fun. And having someone who believes the way that you believe and has the same values that you have, and is able to share those in moments like that about what God has done for them and how they see, how they see a particular maybe passage or a particular text, how it applies to their everyday life and what is happening now. That to me is quite romantic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like the triangle we talk about where God is talking to you and the closer you get to God, the closer you get to each other. Sure, so yeah. that is true. And I found it interesting the aspect of witnessing. I've never thought about that in terms of family worship. So what are, what would you tell, because I see different stages in your journey of worship. What would you tell somebody who maybe a family who's now starting to have worship or somebody who is in a family that is not Christian. What would your tips be to start this, this worship college journey? I would say start with what naturally connects you with God. If it's nature, then spend time in nature. If it's music, spend time in music. If you're the kind of person that the word and when you read it speaks to you, then, then do that and you can start building from there in terms of your relationship with God. Use, don't, don't, just leave, don't just think of family worship at a particular time, but utilize the moments throughout your day that you actually connect with God. Um, when I was younger, the Bible spoke about praying without ceasing and I, I couldn't really understand that. But as you build your relationship with God, you find yourself having the conversations during the day. So when you know you have your alone time, like in a relationship, it doesn't feel weird because you have already built that relationship. So find what comes natural, find, find what feels right to you and God and, and start from there. And then keep expanding and growing and adding to it. If 
there is a particular interest that you have, then do some research and see what is there about it. So you learn a bit more. But I, I always find it important to share that with someone else because the more that you share, the more that it means. And I, I believe that everything that we study, everything that we read, there will be an opportunity arises where you can share that with someone else, where you can strengthen, where you can encourage someone else. So whatever it is you know you can't wait, it, don't just keep it to yourself. Yeah. Find an opportunity to share it with someone else. Yeah, so you hold this thing, if your hand is full of your blessings, you, you can't take any more if they're full. You have to keep going for that. The blessings keep flowing down and you keep receiving and giving. Yeah. I'd like to thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. And what I'm getting from this is that worship doesn't have to be a set, traditional, in the box, by the rule, same thing every morning or evening. But it can be what works for you and your family and the Lord. And I wanted to read a verse before we close, which is Genesis 18, 19, and it says, regarding Abraham, for I have chosen him so that he will command his children and his house after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. This is how the Lord will fulfill to Abraham what he promised him. So we'd like to thank you for joining us this evening and we hope that no matter what your situation, you've taken something from this that will help you to grow in your relationship with God and closer to your family. You have heard it from our interviewees, the importance of family worship, what it means to me, is a way of honoring and glorifying God, is a way of having some common sense of knowledge. It also centers and brings peace within our homes. It bonds our families and it also provides generational testimonies.